Alright, welcome to lesson 5, solve quadratics in factored form. So we're going to figure out another way to solve these quadratics. And this is kind of an intro lesson to a future lesson. This is to help us whenever we run into the next lesson. <clears throat> so, a couple definitions. The factored form of quadratic and our quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c can be two things. It can be this x plus r times x plus s equals zero, where r and s, they're just numbers. Or it can be this x times x plus s equals zero. There's multiple ways that we can see it written. But we're going to talk more about how to get the quadratics to this point in the next lesson. Right now we need to talk right now we're going to talk about what happens when we get there. And that's what the zero product property is. It says that if a b equals zero, if a times b equals zero, and a and b can be a number, they can be a variable, they could be x plus 2 times 3, then we know that a equals 0 or b equals 0. So if you see this a times b or something like that equals 0, either a has to be 0 or b has to be 0. So we can set a equals 0 or we can set b equal to 0. So what I want you to do now is in your group, I want you to look at the zero product property and I want you to figure out and try to think about how we are going to apply this zero product property to our factored form of our quadratic. So go ahead, pause the video, and talk that over now. All right. What we're going to do is let's say that we, let's call x plus r a, and let's call x plus s b. Well, we know that we can set a equal to zero or b equal to zero. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. That quantity, x plus r, we're going to say x plus r equals zero. And then we're going to solve. Or we're going to say that x plus s equals zero. Got a little tight there. And now we have two equations. And it looks kind of like what we did earlier whenever we had absolute values. It's not exactly the same, but it is definitely something that is similar. So let's go ahead and work through an example. The first example here I have is x times x plus 4 equals 0. If I say that this is a and this is b, I'm going to say that x equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. So the left side's already solved. That's nice. I have to solve the right side of the OR though. So we subtract 4 and we get x equals negative 4. So we know that x equals 0 or x equals negative 4. And if you notice, we're still going to have two answers. Because if you remember, these are quadratics. And our quadratics always have two answers. So even though it doesn't look like it, this is a different form of our quadratic. So it's time to solve the second one. This is a and this is b. I'm going to say that the a part equals 0 or the b part equals 0. And then we solve. So we get that x equals 2 or x equals negative 5. So that's using the zero product property on our quadratics that are already in factored form. So here are four examples I want you to work on with your group. So go ahead and pause the video and do that now. And here are the answers to those four examples. So go ahead and pause the video again and look these over with your group. Make sure that you got them right.
Now let's talk about something called a repeated factor. Repeated factors look like this. It's just x plus a number squared equals 0. Well, this is not a this is actually a topic that we've discussed before, just not in this sense. If we think about it, let's take x squared. Well, how can we rewrite x squared? We can rewrite it as x times x. Or another way you can see it written as x times x, like that. Well, if we have x plus 1 squared equals 0, or just not even without, just without the equal zero. Another way we could write it as x plus one times x plus one. So if we had this actually set it to zero, you could rewrite it as x plus one times x plus one equals zero. So you could rewrite it like that, and then you could solve it using our zero product property. Or you could figure out another way to solve it. I'm not going to tell you that other way. I want to see if you can figure that out on your own. So here are two examples that I want you to work through with your group. So go ahead, pause the video, and work through them the way I showed you. Or if you can come up with your own way, that's actually quicker, go ahead and do that. So go ahead, pause the video, and work through those now. All right, and here are the solutions to those two examples. So go ahead and look those over again with your group. Okay, next, this is an example of a factored form of a cubic. Now, a cubic is a polynomial, which we'll learn more about polynomials later, where it looks like ax to the third. It's like that example I talked about at the very beginning of this lesson. We have that third. So you're going to have three answers. Now, this works just like all the others. The zero product property still works if you have three things. So here we have a, b, and c equals zero we still know that a equals 0, or b equals 0, or c equals 0. So the zero product property works no matter how many factors you have here. You can have 3, you can have 4. So let's go ahead and I'll just work through this, and then I have an example for you to do. Actually, how about you go ahead and work through this? So go ahead, pause the video now, and work through this example. All right, so what we're going to do is we just set x minus 4 equals 0, or x plus 10 equals 0, oop, forgot the equals 0, or 2x minus 3 equals 0. And then we just solve. And we get this as an answer. I forgot my second or. All right, here's just one more example I want you to try. So go ahead, pause this video with and work this through with your group now. And here are the solutions, so go ahead, pause the video and review this with your group. After you do that, the video is over.